Hey guys, uh, so I just wanted to do a bit of a rundown today on the song that I just put out called Phantasma. I put it out in the sole purpose of demoing this new Strandberg that they graciously sent me. So this is the, the Bowden uh, NX Standard um, in this lovely forest uh, green finish. I'm not quite sure of the name, but that's the name I'm giving it. <laughs> just like the next sort of evolution. Um, so really happy that I have this in my hands. So we're gonna jump over to the computer now and I'm gonna show you what I did to make the song. So here we are in Reaper. So Reaper is my DAW of choice. So I write uh, pretty much all my music in this. Um, so generally how I write is I'll almost exclusively write in the media domain. Um, so what that allows me to do, it gives me a lot more freedom um, in terms of like composition. So I started it in this MIDI roll here, this item, uh, which I'll bring across. So what this is um, may look pretty chaotic, but this is pretty much like all the MIDI data from the song. Um, well, not exactly all of it, but um, pretty much all the parts, um, but in sort of just like one in one MIDI roll. From a compositional point of view, um, you know, I can access uh, you know, the chords, you know, I can write the chords in, uh, any sort of rhythmic ideas I can write in, any melody I can just write on top of everything. Also, I'm not persuaded by the sound of a certain synth or a certain instrument to kind of influence my, like, harmonic or melodic direction. So, in this I'm using pretty much just a piano sound. So we got... Yeah, so that's pretty much what it sounds like. So as you can hear, that's like pretty much a very reduced down version of, of the opening. And it's it's good just for sketching. So I, I kind of equate this to, you know, like pen and paper. Um, you know, you kind of get the sketch down, the just the basic uh, framework down for the song, all the kind of creative decisions in terms of sonically, like what instruments you're using and what instrument's going to get what part. Um, and a lot of the times I am just kind of doubling. So this might be a good time to switch over to the layers. So that's essentially what we're dealing with in the composition side of things. Everything I've got colorized. So if we have a bit of a listen to each of the buses, so this is the harmony layer. Yeah, so just pianos, uh, electric pianos, uh, square waves, anything I can really get my hands on to sort of uh, thicken up the fundamental harmony layers. So from there, we've got the guitars, which again, I've pretty much just uh, learnt based off the MIDI. Um, so for tones, I mostly use my Fractal AX8. Um, and then on the guitar, I, for a lot of the lead, like kind of distorted lead sounds, um, well, it's mostly just on the bridge, um, but like pretty much all positions on here sound really good. Um, but for that sort of really bitey sort of aggression, um, like on this track here, um, that's pretty much just the, the fractal, the X8, um, and then just on first position. So the harmonies I usually write on the fly, um, just to kind of like add a little bit more texture. Um, and then that part there is, it's actually the same lick from the beginning, um, that kind of whole half uh, sort of diminished sequence going up and down. Um, but there it's it's harmonized in, in, in sharp four, so I'll like a tritone away. Um. Um, and then we got some clean tracks there. The cleans again, mostly still the AX8, um, just on its own patch, uh, just a clean patch. Uh, so I use the AX8 for that. Um, so that's the lead sound there, and that's the amp there if you're if you're curious. The USA USA lead. So for the funk things, uh, I use mostly. I think it was it was either fourth or fifth position. Um, this has a very very spanky sort of like high-end sounding top range on it. It was really worth sort of showcasing that and that was one thing I really noticed about the model was when I when I got it out of the box and plugged it in, it was just like, 
straight away I just I had to have a funk part in the song so that explains um, so yeah this lead here kind of inspired from a like a John Petrucci sort of lead sound it has a bit of chorus on there but this is in the rest point um, in that kind of F major um, just kind of floating around the key center so yeah just a F chord F power chord going under that and then got a little clean track there just doing some comping um, and then one thing I, I started to play with more um, towards the end of the recording phase, I should say, um, is this little thing here, um, which is it's a tremolo uh, reversed um, F chord. And it sounds really cool when you're going into sections to kind of have that it sort of beefs it up a little bit. And I think I'm doing that in one of the layers. I think it's the harmony layer. Yeah. So it's something you don't really notice, but if you take it away, um, it, you'll definitely notice um, a kind of a loss of sort of impact. So again, like all, all the all the guitar parts are, are written exactly how I want them, and then they're essentially just learned straight after. Um, and then this clean section here is yeah just that idea I had. This clean sound I'm actually using a neural DSP uh, patch, and I wanted something that had kind of like a shimmer on it, so. I'm using, I think I'm using Gojira on this, on this guy. Yeah, so just a little patch that I made on that. Um, and the important thing is this shimmer knob that really sort of widen things up and makes it sound quite magical. A little bit of comping in the, in the takes, but it's more just to kind of get the desired result without sitting here for hours and take after take trying to get the one. So other layers, um, all the green ones here, as I said, they're just like kind of the synth leads and kind of more of the orchestral sort of sounds. Uh, so yeah, lots of mallets. Um, yeah, and just kind of like decorating with the, with the Glock and Spill in the music box there, kind of doing a bit of pan automation. So just arpeggiating in, in the ears. And then the classic sort of arpeggiator that's happening in the right ear. <laughs> and then we get the drums. Then we've got bass, so bass I've just got split into such finger bass and then slap bass. So the A section, at the start of the A section, I'm, I'm just doing a bit of slap on there. The other sound there. More of a classic sort of finger bass. So once I'm happy with the arrangement, then starts the recording process. Um, now for me, I'm just recording guitar, everything else is taken care of um, in the arrangement just by the MIDI instruments. So it's just a process of, of just choosing some tones. Um, for this, as I've mentioned, pretty much just going just direct through the AX8. So the first part of the process, I'm just going through and learning all the parts. Um, and just trying to get those under my fingers and I guess a good thing to bring up is I do it this way because it breaks me out of the habits of the stuff that I already know on the fretboard. Composing like this just gives me a lot more freedom. It sort of opens up the possibilities um, and it gets me playing things that I wouldn't naturally sort of think of on guitar. So yeah, that's basically my process. Um, I've been doing it this way for about three or four years. Um, I've certainly uh, ventured into sort of other processes like starting on the guitar, um, which sort of you know, has its own sort of results tied to it. Um, I tend to start on guitar if I'm sort of going for something a little bit more sort of like rock or prog sort of focused. Yeah, for the most part, this this sort of method gets me out of just thinking as a guitar player and it gets me sort of thinking more as like a, as a songwriter or a composer. Um, but yeah, so I hope that uh, clears a few things up and uh, thanks for watching.